Hi, <coughs> everyone. Uh, today I'm going to talk on uh, the bacillus, which is another genotic disease and occupational disease also, because the people who are engaged with certain types of occupations may suffer with the disease. The genus characteristics of this bacillus, it's known as aerobic spore bearers. It is the first pathogenic bacterium. Of course, these are all the uh, unique characteristics of this um, genus Bacillus. The first organism isolated in cure form by the Robert Koch. Based on this, he postulated the Cox postulates. I think you know the, what are the Cox postulates to say any organism which is a causative agent for a pathogenesis. And uh, this, this, uh, they are present in the soil, water, dust, and air, and cause for the infections in human beings as well as animals. So this bacillus, two important species produces the human disease. One is bacillus anthracis, <coughs> which is a causative agent for anthrax, uh, which is in the three or four forms like cutaneous anthrax intestinal anthrax, pulmonary anthrax and uh, anthrax meningitis as a complication of pulmonary anthrax. And bacillus cereus which causes for the gastroenteritis and endocarditis and also catheter related septicemia. And the morphological features of this bacillus anthracis which is gram positive you can see on right side uh, the diagram. <coughs> and spore bearing capsulated aerobic or uh, facultative anaerobes and when they are growing in the culture they will be seen in long chains and by using the polychromethyl blue stain the bacilli stain in blue color with uh, purple capsule and here in the uh, photograph you can see the uh, bacilli, blue colored bacilli, uh, which is surrounded by the purple colored capsule shown with uh, uh, arrow mark. And this kind of uh, reaction is known as McPhidian's reaction, which shows the short chains of bacillus anthracis with amorphous disintegrated uh, capsular material and pus cells as well. And the differences between anthracis and bacillus cereus. Bacillus anthracis, there are nearly seven uh, differences are being given. The most important uh, the differences are the bacillus anthracis will show the won't show the hemolysis and blood agar, whereas bacillus cereus will show the hemolysis and blood agar. And anthracis will possess the glutamyl polypeptide capsule where it's absent in cereus. And the bacillus anthracis uh, is lysed by the gamma phage, it's not possible with cereus. And bacillus anthracis is non motile, whereas bacillus cereus is motile. And on chloral uh, hydrate agar medium, bacillus cereus can grow, but it can't grow, the anthracis won't grow. And a string of pearl appearance this is an important appearance when the organisms are growing on the culture. We will discuss about it later. They will show the bacillus anthracis will show this string of pearl appearance. And source and transmission, these uh, organisms, as we mentioned, as I discussed earlier, they are the animals of the disease, uh, like cattle, sheep, and horses are the susceptible host. When these animals are suffered with the disease, they will die. And from these animal carcasses, the bacilli will be uh, seen in the form of spores and these spores uh, which are formed and present in the environment uh, which may contaminate the uh, grass or the fields and when the cattle, sheep and goats are uh, uh, grazing in the fields they may get <coughs> affect the infection and from this uh, get the infection and from these animals, 
the human human beings are infected by means of ingestion with contaminated food products from the infected animals next one is by means of inhalation of the contaminated <coughs> dust that's in case of wool sort of disease and a contact with the contaminated contaminated animal <coughs> products like uh, wool hair and hides and these pores are present in the environment and infective doses is 2500 to 55000 spores so the anthrax epidemiology is distribution worldwide it's common in africa the zimbabwe and southeast asian countries and china south america turkey pakistan and india it's non contagious disease that means human to human transmission animal to animal transmission is not uh, rather than not, we can say that it's a bit rare. And epizootic in uh, uh, Andhra and Tamil Nadu border, epizootic means among the animals, the disease may get transmitted. If it gets transmitted from the animals to the human beings, it's known as zoonotic. So, this uh, epizootic farm present in the form of cutaneous and meningoencephalitis farm. Grazing animals becomes uh, become infected through ingestion of spores in the soil. The carcasses, that means as I mentioned already, carcasses will become the source for this infection. And uh, Bacillus anthracis, why spores are infective for longer periods? Because the viable uh, for many years in the soil, destroyed definitely by autoclaving. So if you subject any material to be sterilized, for the autoclaving, then only we can remove this uh, spores from the contaminated areas. And no use with phenolic preparations like phenols or any other preparations of phenols. But they are sensitive to the 4% formaldehyde solution and 4% potassium permanganate. And for the one, one with, with the 1% sodium hypochlorite solution. And uh, duckering, this is a very important and uh, different process to kill the spores in the infected animal wool, hair and uh, bristles. Here the 2% formaldehyde is used uh, at 30 to 40 degrees centigrade for 20 minutes. 30 to 40 degrees centigrade for 20 minutes. Whereas uh, for the bristles or the hair to sterilize, we have to apply it for more time otherwise two percent formaldehyde solution at 30 to 40 degrees centigrade that means at 30 to 40 degrees centigrade a uh, small quantity of steam or uh, hot fumes will come in the presence of fumes the two percent formaldehyde will work better to sterilize the <coughs> animal wool uh, hair and bristles and the virulence factors and their mechanisms of action as i mentioned already they possess protein capsule which is made up of poly d glutamic acid capsule which can inhibit the phagocytosis uh, by the phagocytic cells and another thing is anthrax toxin which is a potent exotoxin which consists of three components all of them are thermolabile so <clears throat> these components one is the protective antigen number two is the edema factor and third one is lethal factor and this edema factor uh, edema factor is nothing but uh, always with the action of protective antigen it becomes edema toxin it converts the atp into cyclic amp which leads to the cellular edema within the target cells that means the what are the infected cells with this particular bacterium uh, there you can see the cellular edema, intense cellular edema. And next one is the lethal factor. <coughs> the lethal factor is uh, uh, the lethal factor and the protective antigen again, again is uh, both the combination is called as lethal toxin. So this stimulates the macrophages to produce tumor necrosis factor alpha and interleukin 1 which are responsible for <coughs> shock and death. So here if you see the protective antigen is <coughs> very important uh, antigen uh, for the um, uh, uh, for the virulence of this bacterium and uh, this protective antigen is responsible for the attachment of bacterium to the 
uh, infected cells uh, to produce the toxin further and to, to show its action. And cause of death in uh, <coughs> anthrax infection is oxygen depletion by the toxin effects and secondary shock, increased vascular permeability, respiratory failure and cardiac failure. The sudden and unexpected death is possible in these particular cases. And uh, if you see this the pathogenesis, <coughs> the anthrax pores will enter into the body either by means of cutaneous route, that means either through the abrasions or through uh, the inoculation of the spores into the skin. And another important thing is by means of inhalation. In the next uh, second one, the upper row, you can see the second one, and the inhalation of the spores with the And third type is <coughs> the inhalation of <coughs> inhalation of the spores. Sorry, ingestion of the spores. So these uh, um, spores which will enter the body first time, they will be captured by the macrophages. You all know that that is the first defensive. Uh, the cell which is involved in the defense mechanism. So, this macrophages will engulf and from there there reaches the lymph nodes and uh, in spite of killed by these uh, macrophages, they multiply within the macrophage and uh, results in the impaired immunogenic response and uh, this bacteria which are present inside the macrophage are responsible for the production of uh, toxin that is anthrax toxin. So, the combination of protective antigen and the uh, edema factor is known as edema toxin and which causes for the increased vascular leak and the same thing will be seen in pulmonary and results in pulmonary edema and peripheral edema also possible which leads to <coughs> hypovolemia and uh, hypotension and death. And if you see the next one is the lethal uh, factor or lethal toxin which is a combination of lethal factor and uh, protein protective antigen. Again uh, this lethal toxin acts on the cardiac muscle results in uh, uh, decreased venous return and it is also cause for a hypotension and death. And uh, the so this lethal toxin which is acts on the cardiac uh, muscle our cardiovascular system results in the decreased stroke volume, decreased cardiac output, final results in hypotension <coughs> and death of an individual. So, if you see here the important thing, in the preliminary stages, the capsule uh, <coughs> is responsible for the uh, antiphagocytic activity. Later, the toxin produced by the bacteria <coughs> which is present inside the macrophages and circulating in the blood <coughs> are responsible for the toxin production and results in the death of uh, result in the uh, presence of all types of clinical manifestations. <coughs> First one we will see the cutaneous anthrax which is the most common form and spores enter through the skin lacerations abrasions and farmers and veterinary doctors and butchers are commonly suffers from the disease. After an incubation period, we can see the incubation period of 2 to 5 days, we can see the clinical manifestations. First, it appears as papule and uh, then uh, converted to the vesicle. This vesicle filled with serosanguineous fluid with the non pitting edema. And this vesicle ruptures and undergoes necrosis. Later, it enlarges and forms an ulcer covered by a black ash car. You can see this uh, on the top of it, the first photograph, you can see the black ash car, big black colored lesion, black ash car is seen which is known as malignant pustule. And below that you can see the next photograph where you, you can see the different stages of lesions. The pus lesions are seen in the the smallest one among all those lesions is the uh, papule and later it becomes vesicle filled with the serosanguineous fluid and around the lesion you can see the non-pitting edema 
and later it ruptures and uh, and cause for the necrosis and big ulcers are formed which is the blackish color and big ulcer so the below photograph will show the all stages of this particular malignant pustule so gastrointestinal tract uh, anthrax is by means of ingestion of improperly cooked uh, meat from the infected animal is responsible for this one and the spores invade the mucosa once that is the intestine and reach the mesenteric lymph nodes where they get multiplied and occlude the lymphatics remember this uh, this bacilli uh, number of bacilli will occlude the lymphatics and leads to uh, the toxin production and this toxins uh, anthrax toxins are responsible for ascites and had i mean hemorrhagic adenitis Nedimatous stomach and intestine, especially the terminal ileum or cecum, are commonly infected. The people will suffer with uh, fever, uh, vomiting, and bloody diarrhea. And bloody diarrhea and renal failure are seen as complications, and mortality is around more than 50%. Here you can see uh, the eschar in the um, intestine, edematous intestine, you can see, and also. The black colored one is nothing but Ashkar seen in the black Ashkar seen in the intestinal mucosal epithelial cells, intestinal uh, intestinal tissue. And pulmonary anthrax, otherwise known as wool sorters disease, the people who sort out the wool uh, may get infected through the spores of this bacilli. So it's known as wool sorters disease. It's a high infective dose, like more than 10,000 spores are necessary to produce the infection, and uh, by means of inhalation of spores. With a short incubation period of one to two days, the people may suffer with high fever, shortness of breath, and increased respiratory rate. In this particular case, <coughs> the mortality rate is by also very, very high, it's around uh, more than 95%. And typically, you can't see any kind of uh, pneumonia here, but uh, you can observe hemorrhagic med mediastinitis. That means the mediastinal lymph nodes will become hemorrhagic, and uh, severe pulmonary edema you can observe. And if you see here in the radiograph, just uh, X ray of PA view uh, can show the mediastinal, widened, widened mediastinal because of the hemorrhagic mediastinitis you can see the widened mediastinum and increased vascular markings also seen in the lung fields <coughs> which is suggestive of pulmonary edema and in this particular cases meningitis is also common due to the bacteremia and the hemorrhagic csf with many parcels are seen on csf examination and differential diagnosis for anthrax is cutaneous anthrax will mimic like erysipelas caused by the <coughs> streptococcal species and cutaneous tuberculosis, leprosy, plague, vaccinia which is a viral disease, <coughs> rickets cell pox. Uh, the rickets is another important uh, bacterial infection where you can see, see the uh, black eschars which is a typical of these eschars and tularemia. So these uh, bacterial and viral infections uh, will resembles like uh, cutaneous anthrax and the intestinal am anthrax <coughs> mimics like uh, typhoid fever, acute gastroenteritis, peptic ulcer and mechanical obstruction of the intestine and pulmonary anthrax <coughs> resembles like viral pneumonia, mycoplasma, cytokosis, legionnaire's disease and uh, fungal infections like histoplasmosis and one more occupational disease like silicosis this is common among the silica workers and the sarcoidosis which is another connective tissue disorder <clears throat> so all these diseases will resemble the pulmonary anthrax and the anthrax lab diagnosis the specimen collection has to be done very carefully uh, take the universal precautions and use uh, full ppe ppe means as personal protective equipment on right side of the photograph you can see the uh, mask which is n95 mask and gown and uh, shoes and also the gloves 
so you have to wear the mask and uh, the goggles and also the gloves have to be worn up while you are collecting the samples otherwise they are highly infectious and cause for the disease and another thing is cutaneous uh, anthrax in case of cutaneous anthrax we have to collect the vesicular fluid to stain either by polychromethylene blue or by means of um, what is that um, gram staining method and uh, you can use this fluid for the culture also and in case of intestinal anthrax and pulmonary anthrax <coughs> you have to collect the stool sample and the blood for smear examination by using polychromethylene blue and sputum especially in the case of pulmonary anthrax sputum has to be collected and paid sera has to be collected uh, for antibody detection and the cultural characteristics of this bacterium uh, on ordinary medium uh, the growth is seen in the form of uneven uh, form with wavy margin which is known as medusa head appearance on right side you can see uh, the photograph it's like a medusa head appearance blood agar you can see the non hemolytic colonies and below you can see that uh, uh, colonies which are seen on blood agar plate but there is no any hemolysis colonies are uh, mucoid in nature mucoid nature will be seen by the glistening nature of uh, the colonies and the right side again you can see the three individual colonies that is the original morphology of colony of this bacillus anthracis where you can see the medusa head appearance medusa head appearance colonies and next one is on solid medium with penicillin um, if you grow these organisms this bacterial cells will become large spherical and uh, occur in chains on surface uh, which is known as string of pearl appearance this is an important feature of uh, this bacteria when they are growing in the presence of low doses of penicillin that is string of pearl appearance which is a unique feature to this particular species from the genus bacillus and the selective medium for these organisms is known as plat medium which consists of polymixing lysozyme uh, edta and thallus acetate <coughs> uh this this is the selective medium where okay, again you can see the almost same type of colonies and uh, when these grow organisms are growing on the gelatin stab cultures you can see the growth in the form of inverted uh, fir tree growth like an inverted fir tree you know that fir, fir tree so like inverted fir tree like growth you can see on the gelatin stab culture which shows that they are more aerobes than the <clears throat> anaerobic organisms they can grow better in the aerobic conditions and biochemicals they are catalase positive reduces nitrate to nitrite and the lysogenase production is positive by these organisms glucose maltose sucrose and pahlaw sugars are all fermented and the next one is the serological test <clears throat> most important serological test is the antibody detection by means of elisa and another thing is from the animal car carcasses we can um, do the ascaris thermoprecipitin test so in this thermoprecipitin test we have to <coughs> collect the uh, animal tissue infected animal tissue and from that we have to extract the animal I mean sorry antigens and this antigen has to be mixed with the anti sera anthrax anti sera and if you uh, mix it in a tube test tube which is shown on right side <coughs> if the antibodies are, uh, sorry the bacteria are present in the tissues that means if the animal tissue is infected <coughs> they, then you can see any precipitate so the precipitate you can see in the uh, test tube like in a white uh, precipitate you can see that this is known as ascolase thermoprecipitin test the tube precipitin test for the detection of uh, <coughs> antigens from the infected animal tissue so the mechanism of this thermo uh, ascolase thermoprecipitin test was seen in the in the again the, the test tube uh, test tube how the antigens will be distributed and antibodies will be distributed and forms a zone of echolens 
with visible precipitate. And next method is for the detection of this bacteria or uh, molecular techniques like reverse fragment uh, length uh, polymorphism and also the PCR with polymerase chain reaction. These two methods also will be useful. <coughs> and treatment if you see this uh, antibiotics for non vaccinated individuals and uh, <coughs> who are exposed to the inhalation anthrax. <coughs> and so it has to be administered before lymphatic spread or septicemia. The initial therapy for adults is superfloxacin 400 milligrams intravascularly <coughs> twice a day for about 60 days we have to give. But whereas in case of children the same superfloxacin has to be given and 20 to 30 milligrams per kg body weight uh, intravascular route again for the <coughs> 60 days. So a very long duration we have to give the treatment and the optimal therapy uh, uh, is penicillin G 4 milli international units uh, intravascular route 4 times a day for 60 days we have to give <coughs> or the doxycycline um, 100 milligrams intravascular route in uh, <coughs> intravascular route uh, twice a day have to be given for about 60 days. And in case of children, again the dose is less. The penicillin G 50,000 units per kg body weight uh, has to be given per day for about 60 days. So the doxycycline again is not useful for the anthrax in case of pain. The stern strain will be used for the preparation of this uh, animal vaccine. For the human vaccination, the human vaccine is different. A cellular vaccine, which is a culture filtrate of Avir linked non capsulated strain again will be used, and uh, the preparation of uh, purified uh, uh, antigen only that means the vaccine is prepared only by using the protective antigen, not the purified, the protective antigen and that is being used only in US, and spore vaccine also being <coughs> used in Russia. And dose of this human vaccine is three doses has to be given subcutaneous route at an interval of two weeks and followed by three additional doses at six, uh, sixth month, twelfth month and eighteen months has to be given to complete <coughs> the dosage schedule and every year the booster dose has to be given to maintain the antibody titer in the blood. And next one is anthracoid bacilli. This uh, again comes under the genus anthrax. These anthracoid bacilli are not caused for the disease anthrax, but they cause for some of them will cause for the gastroenteritis and IV associated infections. The bacillus uh, serious, uh, bacillus lycniformis, bacillus stereothermophilus, <coughs> and bacillus subtilis. <coughs> These are the four important uh, uh, species uh, comes under this uh, anthracoid bacilli and they resemble the bacillus anthracis um, and among these uh, four the most important uh, pathogen is bacillus cereus which is an inhabitant of soil, vegetables, cereals uh, but uh, the main source for this bacillus cereus is milk, meat and poultry, the contaminated milk, meat and poultry products. It causes for the food poisoning by entry into the body by through the uh, improp improperly stored grains and spices after the cooking and produces heat stable introtoxin uh, which is known as uh, which is responsible for emetic form of gastroenteritis. And uh, another type of toxin is heat labile intotoxin, which mainly responsible for diarrheic form of gastroenteritis. So, this bacillus cereus uh, toxin stimulates the adenyl cyclase and uh, cyclase and cyclic AMP system and results in watery diarrhea uh, with or without uh, severe vomitings. So, as I mentioned already, the two different types of uh, toxins are produced. Well, diarrheal form is produced by the heat labile intratoxin, which resembles 
cholera toxin and E. coli toxin and the source for this type of toxin is vegetables and uh, meat and sauces mainly. <coughs> the clinical manifestations seen here are abdominal pain, nausea and diarrhea and all these will occur after an incubation period of 8 to 12 hours. And in emetic form, the, this is caused by the heat stable, stable intertoxin with a less incubation period that is 6 hours. So the main source for this kind of uh, uh, disease is rice which is left at the room temperature. So once the rice is prepared and if you uh, leave it uh, the room temperature for, for more than 12 hours, usually that uh, kind of rice is responsible for uh, the responsible for this particular kind of uh, bacillus serious infection by means of contamination of food and the causes for the nausea vomiting abdominal pain and abdominal cramps after the ingestion of food after six hours of the ingestion food and to grow this bacteria <coughs> from the infected uh, uh, food are from the feces uh, obtained from the infected person. We have to use some MIPA medium. MIPA stands for uh, the constituents which are present in this medium. M stands for mannitol. Uh, y stands for egg yolk. And P stands for phenol red. And also the polymyxin B. And A stands for agar. So this MIPA medium is a selective medium. To isolate these organisms from the clinical specimens as well as from the food. So here the colony morphology you can see the flat colonies uh, around uh, large flat colonies which are pink in color and surrounded by a white precipitate. And uh, the bacillus serious treatment and preventive aspects the stool sample and uh, MIPA medium uh, so once you used by for isolation of these organisms, uh, usually these organisms are sensitive to ciprofloxacin and vancomycin, and uh, this uh, it kind of infection prevented by the adequate uh, cooking of the food, proper storage, and also the efficient refrigeration. So if you refrigerate the food after cooking. Even though the bacteria contaminate, the bacteria are not able to produce the toxin. So, if you consume the uh, food with the preformed toxin, then only people will suffer. So, once the uh, bacteria won't go in the food by means of refrigeration, the toxin will not be produced. Once the toxins are not produced, they are not infectious to the human beings. And next one is this bacillus series also produces panophthalmitis which is more severe form and also causes for IV uh, uh, catheter associated septicemia and endochondritis. So this is about uh, the bacillus anthracis. Bye. Thank you.